Hot Chips Recap, Intel and ARM Big Reveals. This was my topic I wanted to talk about. So Hot Chips is a, uh, is a symposium around uh, semiconductors that takes place every, uh, every, uh, every year. Um, and it's usually at places like MIT or Stanford. It was at Stanford this year. News came out of it, but um, some specific stuff I wanted to talk about came out of Intel and ARM. First is ARM. Really big news coming out. Um, they're coming out with, uh, made two big announcements. One is this, uh, this program called CSS or Compute Subsystems. Um, and essentially what it is, Paul, this might be of interest to you because you're uh, especially nerdy on the semiconductor side. <laughs> um, but for customers or, or partners that want to deliver customized silicon out to a market for very specific purposes, maybe it's for something on the networking side for Will or something uh, around, related to AI, um, specific accelerators. ARM is providing a fully validated, um, fully configured compute subsystem that you can just drop silicon into and provide these solutions. So it cuts down on the development life cycle for silicon engineers. They're saying 80 engineering years, um, which is a whole lot of money. But from a time frame uh, perspective, anybody who's worked in this market, you know, you're going from three to four years down to a year worth of, of uh, development time, which from a time to market perspective is super huge. Um, I think they're doing this partly in response to uh, what risk risk has done with risk five or risk V out in the marketplace, um, you know, kind of more rapid development life cycles. Uh, but they're also bringing the quality and the strength of the arm, um, you know, certified systems uh, program to, to bear and the strength of the ecosystem. Really cool. The other big part, um, you know, they announced officially launched V2, which is their high performing core um, architecture aimed at AI, aimed at HPC, um, really driving kind of the high performance compute workloads. Uh, for, for those who don't uh, follow what ARM is doing from an architectural perspective, when you think of V2, think of NVIDIA's Grace Hopper. The Grace CPU aspect of, or part of Grace Hopper is designed around V2. So lots of real news right on the heels of their uh, getting ready to go public. Um, lots of big news coming up from ARM. Uh, love to see what they're doing there. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch how these take off in, in, uh, in the market. And before I ask you guys for input, I'm going to hit on Intel real quickly. Intel gave some insight around 2024 for Xeon. Um, Sapphire, Sapphire Rapids is what they have out now, but Granite Rapids and uh, Sierra Forest are the two cores that they're going to, need to deliver in, uh, in response to this, uh, this, um, commitment that Pat Gelsinger, CEO Pat Gelsinger, made to delivering five process nodes in four years. Um, Granite Rapids is the high performing part. Uh, they call it the P core, the performance core. And Sierra Forest is the low, uh, the lower end, more power efficient part, the E core, um, that will kind of serve up traditional enterprise and, uh, and hyperscalers. So lots of news coming out of both. I don't know if, if y'all follow hot chips or you follow kind of the the market in general, but just from a workload perspective or what you see in the enterprise, any any thoughts on any of this? Well, hey, Matt, I got a question for you, not a thought. So I recently worked with Intel on a confidential computing <laughs> research brief that was that was published. And, you know, the, it's leveraging extensions within, you know, fourth generation, you know, Xeon scalable processors. Was there any discussion around confidential computing at hot chips and what Intel is doing? So my understanding, when you look at uh, 2024, um, specifically around Sapphire Rapids, or not Sapphire Rapids, that's the that's Gen 4, yeah. um, Granite Rapids, and um, in the efficiency core, uh, Sierra Forest, uh, they're going to, it looks like they're going to increase the enclave size of SGX. You're talking about SGX. SGX and TDX, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, they're, going to, they're going to increase the... Uh, they're going to increase the enclave side, but they're also going to 256-bit encryption um, for security as well, up from 128. So more secure, um, bigger enclaves to throw your apps and data into. Um, and I actually, to what you're saying, they've done a great job, even in fourth gen, with taking what was SGX, something that a developer would have to deconstruct their application and actually write to. Yeah. to just providing these enclaves that it become application aware. So it makes it a lot easier to deploy and, and employ their security technologies for enterprise workloads. Um, so they're going to extend that, you know, ease of use. Yeah. Um, and also, again, make it bigger and make it more secure. 
I think, you know, Intel has done a great job too, sort of building the ecosystem to your point, making it easy um, to, to develop, you know, on this and, and sort of leverage that confidential computing capability. And, you know, another shameless plug for my research brief that's just been posted, but I also provide some examples of, uh, of actual deployments and partnerships that, that Intel is engaged in to sort of drive this forward. So I would encourage, you know, our listeners and our viewers to go hit my, uh, my Twitter feed at Willtown Tech, and you can find that link and, and, and download that paper. But, you know, kudos to Intel, because not only are they putting that out there, but, you know, they're, they're supporting the ecosystem to make it a reality. Yeah, they've yeah. done Quite possible. Yeah, I'll also mention that, uh, um, you know, uh, Intel's uh, long-term strategy for AI is AI everywhere. Uh, they've made uh, they made that pretty pretty clear, and they see the world in basically uh, two versions. There's a version of large language models that uh, Nvidia lives in, where you've got uh, you know thousands of GPUs and uh, millions of dollars to train these these large models, and and then there's the uh, what uh, what Nvidia sees is uh, using smaller models. To uh, enable, uh, you know, putting a AI everywhere from laptops to phones to just about everything. In fact, they've said they're going to put AI in every product. And so a lot of these smaller models are going to be running on uh, uh, Xeon fourth generation. Uh, and the, the sweet, sweet spot, spot for that is about uh, about 10 billion uh, parameters. So uh, it's a much smaller model. It can do, uh, can't do all the concurrent functions that these huge models can do, but it does a couple of things very well. So that's the market that uh, they're looking at, and that's why they're, they're going to uh, the processes that they are. I love what they've done with that, Paul, to what you're saying. Um, you know, there's a, you know, the, especially in the fourth gen, and they're going to improve upon that going forward, but, you know, the acceleration engines they put in, I think they're right to say, you know, there, there's a, there's a, kind of delineation between where you need that acceleration as a discrete um, add-on, such as, you know, NVIDIA's GPUs, um, and what you can do within the CPU through acceleration engines. And they're addressing a lot of the mainstream down through that, um, down through that acceleration engine strategy, which I think is going to, that's why they've done so well in AI, even though the CPU integer performance um, and vector performance hasn't been quite as strong as its competitor, because of these acceleration engines, you see AI workloads, you know, uh, you know, performing very, very well on Xeon relative to the competition. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, if you look at the latency, uh, I mean, their, their objective is to keep it down to uh, 100 milliseconds, under 100 milliseconds. And, and all the uh, performance data I've seen, it's all been uh, pretty much all underneath uh, 100. So. Yeah, very cool. Hey, by the way, uh, as we trans transition into IBM, I think I referenced you as Paul Goodson Smith at the beginning instead of Smith Goodson. I'm so sorry. I'm terrible with hyphens. Uh, so I'm really sorry. I, I'd like to say I'm just like something. You through your life, uh, <laughs> what your name is and spelling it out every time you, you tell somebody what your name is. 